Today, we will be solving two different types of free fall problems. First problem, imagine you are standing on top of a building whose height h is six meters and you simply drop an object. The goal is to understand how the position and the velocity of the object change with time t. This is called a free fall problem because the object moves only under the influence of Earth's gravity. We also assume that there is no air resistance, which means the only force acting on the object is gravity. Because of this, the acceleration remains constant throughout the motion. To do this, we rely on kinematics, but only under two important conditions. First, the motion must be one-dimensional, meaning the object only moves up or down. Second, the acceleration of the object must be constant. In free fall, when we are near the surface of the Earth, this acceleration is due to gravity, which we call g, and it always points downward with a constant value of 9.8 meters per second square. Before solving the problem, let us first recall the three kinematic formulas used for such motion. The first formula relates final velocity v sub f to initial velocity v sub i, acceleration a, and the total elapsed time of the motion delta t and is given like this. Note that delta t means the final time t sub f minus the initial time t sub i, which represents the total elapsed time of the motion. The second one connects the change in the vertical position or displacement delta y to initial velocity, acceleration, and the square of delta t like this. Note that delta y means the final position y sub f minus the initial position y sub i. The last one links final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and the change in the vertical position without involving time. Now the first important thing to note is that, for free fall problems, we adapt these formulas by replacing acceleration a with minus g. The minus sign appears because we choose the upward direction as positive. So gravity, which points downward, must be negative. This choice of direction is very important, and it must stay consistent throughout the problem. Now let us look at the first problem. We drop a ball from a height h of 6 meters. Because the ball is dropped and not thrown, we must note down the word dropped carefully, since it simply means that the initial velocity v sub i is zero. The next step is to define the ground as position y equals zero and upward direction as positive. That means the starting position of the ball, or y sub i, is positive 6 meters. As soon as the ball is released, its acceleration, a, is minus g, as discussed earlier. The first question we ask is how much time it takes for the ball to hit the ground. To answer this question, we must choose the kinematic relation that includes delta y and delta t, but does not require knowing the final velocity. So we choose this second formula. Now the final position yf of the ball is at y equals zero, and y sub i is six, so we get delta y as minus six. This negative sign makes sense because the displacement is in a downward direction. Now substitute all known values to solve for delta t. We get minus 6 equals 0 times delta t minus half of minus g times delta t squared. Put this g as 9.8, so delta t will be equal to the square root of 12 over 9.8, which is roughly 1.1 second. So the ball takes about 1.1 second to fall 6 meters. The second question asks how fast the ball is moving just before it hits the ground. Now that we know the time of the entire free fall, we can use the relation between velocity, acceleration, and delta t. Substituting the known values into the expression gives a final velocity of about minus 10.8 meters per second. The negative sign tells us the velocity is directed downward, which matches our physical expectation. This completes the solution of the first free fall problem, where an object is simply dropped from rest. All right, now.
Now let's move on to the second problem, where instead of being dropped, the object is thrown vertically upward, so the initial velocity v sub i is not zero. We consider a ball thrown vertically upward from the top of the same building of height 6 meters, with an initial velocity v sub i equal to 5 meters per second. What will be its motion? Yes, right? It will first rise upward against gravity, slowing down until its velocity becomes zero at the peak. Then, from that peak height, it will fall back down, accelerating under gravity until it reaches the ground. The motion is thus a combination of upward and downward motion. The first question is to find how long it takes to reach the peak height. Okay, to solve this, collect all the known variables first. We have v sub i equals 5. Now, since the ball is thrown upward, gravity acts downward and slowly reduces the velocity from 5 meters per second to 0. So, v sub f equals 0. So, it means that we have sufficient information to find delta t if we use the first kinematic formula. We get 0 equals 5 minus 9.8 times delta t. This gives delta t equals 5 over 9.8 or about 0.51 seconds. This is the time it takes to reach the peak height. The second question is to find this peak or the maximum height from the ground. We have the initial position y sub i as 6. Let us label this max height as y sub f, or the final position of the ball as soon as it reaches the peak height. So delta y will be yf minus 6. We can use the third kinematic equation to solve for the delta y. Substitute the known values. We get 0 square or 0 equals 5 square or 25 minus 2 times 9.8 times delta y. This gives delta y as around 1.28 meters. So yf for the maximum position of the ball is equal to 6 plus 1.28 or 7.28 meters. Next we need to find the speed of the ball just before it hits the ground. This question is the same as the one we solved in the first problem because, if we consider it as a separate question, then the ball now starts from rest, just like it is dropped or released from this height. It's just that the value of the height is now changed from 6 to 7.28. So again, we can use this third kinematic relation. V sub i is now zero and delta y is y, final, which is the y value of the ground that is zero, and y initial is 7.28. So delta y is minus 7.28. Substitute the values to get this. Both these negative signs will become positive, and thus we get v sub f nearly equal to plus or minus 11.95 meters per second. But we will choose the negative one, because its final velocity will be in the downward direction. Wow, amazing! Finally, we need to find the total flight time. For that, we have to add the time taken to reach the peak height and the time taken to come down from that maximum height to the ground. To calculate the time for the downward journey, we can choose the first kinematic relation. We already have all the values except for the time delta t. So we get minus 11.95 equals 0 minus 9.8 times delta t. This gives delta t as nearly 1.22 seconds. So the downward journey takes about 1.22 seconds. And when we add the upward time of 0.51 second, the total flight time becomes about 1.73 seconds. And that's it. This is how we can now solve any freefall problems. Okay, now it's your turn to solve this problem and let me know your answer in the comments. If this explanation helped you, please like the video and share it with others who might benefit. If you want to support me even more and help me create more high-quality content, you can also become my Patreon. So good!